This experiment is tricky to get right. On the left, a glass syringe containing a carefully measured amount of nitrogen gas. On the right, another syringe holding precisely three times as much hydrogen gas. And waiting between them, ordinary iron wool with an extraordinary job to do. All that's missing is heat. The gas is mixed together as they travel back and forth over the hot iron. If it's working, this is where ammonia is created. This is the chemical reaction that should be happening here. One unit of nitrogen and three of hydrogen turn into two units of ammonia. The iron doesn't take part in the reaction, it's a catalyst. It helps the nitrogen and hydrogen bond together. Now it's time to find out if the experiment has worked. This pump sucks the gas out of the tubes through these yellow crystals. If there's ammonia in the apparatus, they'll change color to blue. It works, this time. But the equation reveals why ammonia is so hard to make. The double arrows mean the reaction goes both ways. It's reversible. Ammonia can turn back into the ingredients. The trick is to make the ammonia faster than it breaks down. This plant makes 800 tons of ammonia every day. That's enough to fertilize 7,000 football fields. It uses a system called the harbor process. The process needs a giant maze of whining machinery and hissing pipes. To make ammonia, they must first make its ingredients, hydrogen and nitrogen. This is where the nitrogen comes from. There's not much to see on the outside, but on the inside, the machinery pressurizes air to separate out nitrogen from all the other gases around us. Inside this tower, the different gases turn into liquids at different temperatures. It's called fractional distillation. Half a kilometer away is a vast furnace. It makes hydrogen from natural gas, methane. Methane has the chemical formula CH4, one carbon and four hydrogen atoms. They extract the hydrogen by mixing the methane with superheated steam, H2O, at 500 Celsius. The tremendous heat splits up the methane and the water molecules and frees up the hydrogen. What's left over is carbon monoxide. Finally, the nitrogen and hydrogen come side by side down these pipes. The heart of the plant where ammonia is made. It's called the converter. Just like the experiment in the lab, the converter contains iron for a catalyst. And it's hot. And it's at such high pressure that the metal wall must be made 11 centimeters thick. Outside, enormous steel bolts hold it together. Here's the problem. High pressure and cool temperature would make lots of ammonia, but it would take too long so they have to heat the reaction up. That makes it go faster, but it also makes the ammonia break down quicker. Somewhere in between, there's an optimum, a temperature and pressure that works best. So the final stage of the plant starts with a compressor. It pressurizes a mixture of nitrogen and hydrogen gas to about 200 times atmospheric pressure. But the compression has another effect. It also forces the temperature of the gases up to about 350 Celsius. That makes the nitrogen and hydrogen gas molecules split up. Inside the converter, a hot iron catalyst is waiting for the nitrogen and hydrogen. They react together at its surface to make ammonia. The reaction also releases heat, keeping the temperature just right for maximum production, about 500 Celsius. 
But even so, some of the nitrogen and hydrogen is still left over. So the mixture that passes out from the converter isn't pure ammonia. The very last stage chills the mixture's temperature down so that ammonia condenses out as a liquid. It's drained off from the bottom. Meanwhile, the nitrogen and hydrogen float up to the top and get sent round a loop back to the converter. So, to make ammonia from the air by the Haber process, air is first liquefied under pressure and the nitrogen separated out by fractional distillation. Hydrogen is extracted from methane at high temperature. The nitrogen and hydrogen are combined to make ammonia. This is done at high temperature and pressure with an iron catalyst.